Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority has secured a million dollars in ARPA funding to conduct a safety barrier feasibility study on two Rhode Island bridges. While safety continues to be top of mind, some are calling for more access to these barriers for bridges across the state. 12 News reporter Matt Paddock joins us now live in studio with those details. Matt. Shannon, the Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority approved funding for a feasibility study on both the Mount Hope and Jamestown Verrazano bridges. But for one advocacy group, they say time is of the essence. Two Rhode Island bridges could be looking a little different in the near future. After the Turnpike and Bridge Authority secured funding from ARPA to study the feasibility of installing safety suicide barricades on the Mount Hope and Verrazano bridges. Put in a request for ARPA funds with the state of Rhode Island and uh, we asked for a million, 1.5 million. Unfortunately, Lori Silvera says the state was only able to allocate a million dollars, which she says means they had to decide which of the bridges they would conduct the studies on, coming to the decision to leave out the Pell Bridge. But what's next? Silvera says the study should begin as early as January of 2023. It starts with data collection, um, then a data analysis, um, then there's a wind study. The wind study takes about three months. For local advocacy groups like Bridging the Gap for Safety and Healing, they say that every second counts. We can't afford to wait. We have to move with more sense of urgency. Kata says she's experienced the pain and loss of life firsthand from the lack of these barriers. I was a witness to a jump on one of these bridges um, and it has forever changed my life. So initially, like it, it was very difficult. It was, it was several months before I really was able to wrap my head around, well, what am I going to do now? Now Kata says her mission is to raise awareness about mental health and take measures to try and stop this tragedy from ever happening again, starting with the installation of these barriers. According to Silvera, they hope to have a final feasibility report by February of 2024. If you or anyone you know may need some help, you can call the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. It's an easy three-digit number, 988. We've also posted resources on WPRI.com. Reporting live in studio, Matt Paddock, 12 News. There's a study underway looking at whether or not to install stronger safety measures on two Rhode Island bridges. As 12 News reporter Matt Paddock tells us, some welcome the news, but others say even more needs to be done. Matt? Shannon, the Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority approving funding for a feasibility study on both the Mount Hope and Jamestown Verrazano bridges. But for one advocacy group, they say time is of the essence. Two Rhode Island bridges could look a little different in the near future. After a million dollars of funding was secured from ARPA to study the feasibility of installing safety suicide barricades on those bridges. We can't afford to wait. We have to move with more sense of urgency. But for Melissa Cotta, co-founder of Bridging the Gap for Safety and Healing, a suicide prevention advocacy group, urgency is everything. We are always pushing to get temporary barriers up while we wait for the studies to be completed and also for permanent barriers as well. Kata says she's experienced the pain and loss of life firsthand from the lack of these barriers, which is why she says it's so important to continue talking about mental health and doing all that we can to keep those in our state safe. I was a witness to a jump on one of these bridges um, and it has forever changed my life. So initially, like it, it was very difficult. It was, it was several months before I really was able to wrap my head around, well, what am I going to do now? Her mission, raise awareness about mental health, but also take measures to try and stop this tragedy from happening again. We will move as quickly as we can on the feasibility study to see what exactly is feasible. For Lori Silvera, executive director of the Rhode Island Turnpike and Bridge Authority, any loss of life is devastating. We don't want this happening at all. But she says these bridges are getting old and they need to be sure that they are fully functioning. As I say, I always come back to the fact that our job is to maintain these bridges in a safe condition and make certain that they function the way they're supposed to function for According to Silvera, they hope to have a final feasibility report by February of 2024. If you or anyone you know may need some help, you can call the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. It's an easy three-digit number, 988. We have also posted resources on our WPRI.com website. Live in studio, Matt Paddock, 12 News.